you guys will like this. I'm going to read a quick excerpt from an essay written by, and this is very relevant to what we've been talking about. Um, so this is an essay written by Charles Webster Leadbeater. Leadbeater is probably, a, he took on that name. It's, it's, it's kind of like an esoteric, you know, Freemasonic tradition, yeah. symbol, symbolic name. Yeah, I don't think that was his actual name. So he was a, a very developed clairvoyant who unfolded and perfected his psychic faculties under the guidance of his adept teacher. And he commenced his clairvoyant investigations in 1893, on occasion collaborating with Annie Besant, the second president of the Theosophical Society, wrote over 30 books on the spiritual life and the psychic nature of man. You're also going to find a whole bunch of dirt and things, you know, people are besmirching and, you know, just uh, impugning Leadbeater for all sorts of stuff. You're going to find all that too. Something actually changes when you actually just take the time to read the material and where you, you know, you know that feeling when you know that you're, you're, you're definitely reading something that has some sort of deep intrinsic value, right? The ability to just objectively look at an idea yeah. before you judge it, take it in and mull over, you know, just sort of let it absorb a second and then start to reason through it and say, does it, does it make sense? Yeah. You actually, you know, critically go through it yourself and be able to make your own decision. So this essay that I'm going to read a small excerpt from vegetarianism and occultism, definitely worth your time to read. There's a section of this essay on vegetarianism and occultism, and it's called less animal passion. Now we've been talking about how food affects your behavior, how food affects your mind. And this is what Leadbeater has to say about how the habit of eating meat, right? And flesh foods influences the passions. Okay. So that's what he's talking about. Because the eating of dead bodies, <laughs> because the eating of dead bodies leads to indulgence in drink and increases animal, animal passions in man, Mr. H.B. Fowler, who has studied and lectured on dipsomania for 40 years, di dipsomania, that's alcoholism, drinking dipsomania for 40 years, declares that the use of flesh foods by the excitation that it exercises on the nervous system prepares the way for habits of intemperance in everything. And the more flesh is consumed, the more serious is the danger of confirmed alcoholism. It's interesting. You probably imagined at some point that this very comfortable relationship that meat and alcohol at the dinner table as some sort of high class, fancy, sophisticated way of eating your meals. Imagine that that was just some sort of human thing that we did for some reason. No, no, it's because meat has this type of effect on your body where it, it locks you into this lower vibrational state where you're looking for more stimulation. And the two of those things, they complement each other very well. And it started to become a, a staple in culture. The hilarious thing is that that is given a badge of refinement and, you know, culinary refinement. It's just, it's, it's a weird thing, right? You've got this dead body on your, anyway. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, continuing, I mean, it's, it's civilized. Okay. Many experienced physicians have made similar experiments and wisely act on them in their treatment of dipsomaniacs. The lower part of man's nature is undoubtedly intensified by the habit of feeding upon corpses. I am going to read that sentence one more time. The lower part of, the lower part of man's nature is undoubtedly intensified by the habit of feeding upon corpses. Even after eating a, a full meal of such horrible material, a man still feels unsatisfied for he is still conscious of a vague, uncomfortable sense of want, and consequently he suffers greatly from nervous strain. This craving is the hunger of bodily tissues which cannot be renewed by the poor stuff offered to them as food. To satisfy this vague craving, or rather to appease these restless, ner <laughs> restless nerves, oh my gosh, appease these restless nerves so that it will no longer be felt recourse is often had to stimulants readers aside like alcohol 
Sometimes alcoholic beverages are taken. Sometimes an attempt is made to allay these feelings with black coffee. Readers aside, there was a bunch of comments in the in your comment feed about someone had, had mentioned using coffee. Is it is it really that bad? Uh, my answer is yes. It is that bad. Stay away from coffee. It has no place in any human's diet whatsoever. I mean, uh, sometimes alcoholic beverages are taken. Sometimes an attempt is made to allay these feelings with black coffee. And at other times, strong tobacco is used in the endeavor to soothe the irritated, exhausted nerves. Here we have the beginning of in intemperance. For in the majority of cases, intemperance began in the attempt to allay the alcoholic stimulants, the vague, uncomfortable sense of want, which follows the eating of impoverished food, food that does not feed. That's not the end of the section, um, but the rest of the section and the rest of the essay is is equally as stirring and powerful and compelling very very much worthwhile reading the main element that i think i want to stress in this is that lower order foods what they tend to do is they tend to lock you into the lowest aspects of yourself and the lowest aspects of your psyche as a human being they lock you into sensuality into being enslaved by the tyranny of the senses and they take you away they pull you away from the sensitivity of mind and the sensitivity of of emotion that connect you to the higher and more glorious aspects of what it means to be alive as a human being so this is a big problem <laughs> because when you are locked into the lowest aspects of yourself it means that you are locked into the lowest base level, instinctual level drives that start to compel the majority of your behaviors. I don't know of any better way to say it besides just straight up saying it. When you clean up your, your body and you clean up your lifestyle in terms of your relationship to food and you remove these pernicious influences, you become, for lack of a better term, a better human being. You simply will grow into a better person when you remove these elements from your diet because your thinking and your emotionality will be cleaner. This esoteric understanding that reaches far back into antiquity where they understood very, very well that you cannot make, cannot, the gates to spiritual development are closed and barred to those who do not have the, the basic level of maturity and responsibility to clean up their diets. That was an understanding that reached far back into antiquity. And this is something that we've lost today. We want to imagine that we can be spiritually connected and just eat garbage. It doesn't work like that. And so Leadbeater was no stranger to this type of information where he, that he knew very, very, very well that there is no such thing as spiritual development if you can't look after your body, none. Because your mind and your emotional self will not be able to, to deal with the weight of responsibility that true spiritual advancement demands of you.